Moore Vister. I was born in the Bronx, New York, in December 1941. I've always felt responsible for World War II. The first thing I remember liking that liked me back was food. I had a bad puberty. It lasted 17 years. I'm a high school graduate. I went to art school. My entrance exam was on a book of matches. I decided to move out of the house when I was 24. My mother still refers to this as the time I ran away from home. Eventually, I ran to Minneapolis, where it's cold, and I figured I'd keep better. Now I'm back in Manhattan. New York, this is your last chance. It seems like just yesterday you moved in, and here you are moving out to get married. Yeah. Well, someday it's going to happen for you, Brenda. You meet a wonderful guy, fall in love, decide to get married, and be just as nauseous as I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Joe for the trunk. Listen, can you? I got it. Thank you. Hi, Joe. Hi, honey. Hi, yeah, Brent. Hello, Joe. Mm. I'm going to miss that around here too. <laughs> the lingering scent of aqua velva. Trunk's <laughs> ready, huh? Yeah, yeah, all ready, Joe. Listen, why don't I get Carlton to give you a hand? The doorman? Yeah. No, he's really loaded here. What do you mean, really? He just blew his whistle to hail me an elevator. <laughs> Hello? Uh, this is Carlton, your doorman. Uh, from your lobby, you know? <laughs> Good, Carlton. You know where you are. What is it? There's a strange woman on her way up. A strange woman? Why didn't you find out who it is? I know who it is. It's your mother. <laughs> Thanks. You know, it might be my imagination, but I think I'm starting to smell scotch coming through this room. Hey, what's Ma doing here? She's probably coming to reopen negotiations. There's nothing to negotiate. We decided to get married quietly in the judge's chambers, and that's it. Right, Joe? Hey, it's up to you. I'm staying out of it. I'm still getting over my first wedding. Bad, huh? Well, I knew I was in trouble when the minister said you may kiss the bride, and she said, don't smear my makeup. <laughs> Hi, Ma. Hi, Rhoda. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Ma. Hi there, son-in-law. <laughs> Hi, Ida. Tell me, Joe, you nervous about Sunday? Well, you know, some men on their wedding morning wake up with crazy thoughts in their head, like, uh, should I go through with this? Let me reassure you, you should. <laughs> it's really gonna be fun having you for a mother-in-law, Ida. Why don't you ever talk to me like that? Ma, when did I ever give you the impression that I didn't think you were fun? <laughs> okay, Ida, let me get this trunk out of here. Joe. Lift with the legs. Don't strain yourself before the wedding. <laughs> I'll see you later, Rhoda. Yeah, bye, Joe. Bro, I'm gonna clean some of your stuff out of the bathroom for you. Oh, thanks, Brenda. That's great. Oh, Rhoda, Rhoda. What? To think that in two days, my firstborn will be married. Yeah. Where are you getting married again? I keep forgetting. <laughs> We have been around on this a dozen times now. Now, just accept the fact that I am not having a big wedding. I mean, you save us both a lot of trouble if you just let me do this my own way, huh? You think this is for me? For me? Well, forget me. I'm not important. But what about your father? Think of his feelings. I know it doesn't matter to Pop. Doesn't matter to Pop. <laughs> well, let me tell you, little lady, that just the other day I heard that poor man say to your Aunt Rose, if Rhoda doesn't have a big wedding, there will be no living with Ida. <laughs> Brenda, did you hear this? Do you believe this person? I'm gonna be married in 48 hours and she is still trying to change my wedding plans. <laughs> I'm not trying to do anything. The situation here is that I've already done something. <laughs> if nobody asks, what? I still have a chance. <laughs> well, I certainly hope that nobody asks what, because what I've done would be very hard to tell you. Because it's huge. 
<laughs> and only a mother would understand why I have done this. What? Done what? What? <laughs> Well, since you've asked, <laughs> without actually clearing it with you, Rhoda, I have asked some people up to the apartment for a get-together on Sunday. Oh, before or after the wedding, Ma? During. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, a let me get this, please. You have actually planned a wedding for me at your apartment, knowing that I don't want a big ceremony? What do you consider big? Anything over 12 people. I may have overstepped. <laughs> How many, Ma? Not counting musicians, 79. <laughs> Overstepped. You are awe-inspiring. <laughs> yes. You know, in a crazy kind of way, she may be a great woman. <laughs> you can't do this, Ma. You really can't. Yeah, you're not gonna force me into this. I you're mean, you, you can do a lot, but this you can't do. No way. You have I'm really not overstepped you yourself. You understand? Ma, I'm gonna have my marriage the way I wanna have it, the way I planned it originally, no matter what. Because this time, it isn't just another day in my life. It's my wedding day, and that's it. So, what's your decision? <laughs> Who are we kidding, Rhoda? She's gonna get you. How? Ma, I'm getting married the way I planned. Okay, Rhoda, you do what you have to do. I'll, I'll make the best of it. She's gonna get you. Of course, I don't know what I'm gonna do with those 79 people on the folding chairs facing the mantel. Not to mention Grandmother Morgenstern, who, when I call her at the home... <laughs> invite her to your wedding said that she never thought that she'd live to see you get married. I just hope the disappointment doesn't... She got you. Yeah. Okay, Ma, okay. You win, you're still the champ. If it's all right with Joe, we will get married at your place. Whatever you want. <laughs> The Minneapolis airport was fogged in. I was there from 7 o'clock last night until 5 this morning. Oh. I must look awful. Yeah, you really do, kid. <laughs> I hate to gloat, ma'am, but uh, for the first time in my life, I think I look better than you do. <laughs> oh, Rhoda, I really missed you. Oh, you missed me. Mm. I've lost my only link to classy. Ah. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Thank I you. really, Mary. Oh, boy. Mary, this is weird, but... I think I see a man weaving this way that looks just like Lou Grant. Oh, oh. I, I don't believe this. I don't believe this. Sorry we're late, Rhoda. We wanted to freshen up a little. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for you, Rhoda. Oh, Mary Lou. Uh, oh. <laughs> What a hug. <laughs> that is no longer a hug. You are now holding him up. What are you guys doing here? Well, they drove me to the airport, and we sat around talking about you and the wedding. Yeah, they gave us free liquor. We toasted you a few times, and a few more times. <laughs> and then Mr. Grant said everybody should do at least one dumb, crazy thing in his mm -hmm. lifetime, and this one agreed. And, and here just... we are. <laughs> 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 It's crazy, isn't it? And I'm not a guy that does crazy things, right? Oh, but I'm so glad you did it. Because now three of my favorite people in the world are here for my wedding. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> well, three out of four ain't bad. <laughs> i 
waiting for Raquel. Oh, okay. Nonsense. I reserved a car. I'll drive you. Oh. That way, I can point out various landmarks of historical interest. <laughs> Great. Phyllis, you were going to show me New York? Actually, I was thinking of Mary. You can sit in the back with Lou and Murray and talk about sports. <laughs> I just remembered, Lou. We don't have any luggage. I do. Mary must have a suitcase. Where's your stuff, Mary? Yes, it's white. Mr. Grant has my initials on it. Uh, yeah. No, wait, no, I didn't bring that one because the handle was broken. Uh, I'll find it now that you've narrowed it down for me. <laughs> I'm looking for a suitcase with your initials not on it. I have several pieces, all brown. Brought everything in paper bags, huh? <laughs> Hey, you want me to get them for you, Phyllis? Oh, Murray, I can't refuse you anything. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'll be okay as long as I don't look at that part that goes round and round. Hey, kid, I got so much to tell you. Oh. Oh. Yes, Mary, I do too. Phyllis, I just saw you on the plane. I lead a very full life. <laughs> you know, Phyllis, um, I'm really surprised you're here. Oh. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, it's very nice, and I, I think it's terrific of you to come. But I'm just somehow uh, surprised. I don't know why. Could it have anything to do with the fact that I wasn't invited? <laughs> that might be it. Your friendship has always been very special to me, Rhoda. <laughs> I wouldn't deny myself a chance to meet the man you finally hooked. <laughs> I'll get the car. Can you two manage? We'll try. <laughs> Always keep the class next to you. You're in New York now. <laughs> so, tell me all about the wedding. Okay. Well, you know the simple ceremony in the judges' chambers? Yeah. Out. What? The entire scene has moved uptown to my parents' apartment in the Bronx. Yeah. At this moment, my mother is cornering the market in chopped liver. Oh, <laughs> Rhoda, you're getting married at home. That's wonderful. Yeah, there's more. My mother bought me a wedding gown. White, with the veil. Oh. Yeah, it took me two hours to talk her out of adding a train to be carried by five little cousins. <laughs> Listen, I, I just can't wait to meet Joe. Is he wonderful? That's uncanny. You've never met him, and you just described him to a team. <laughs> and listen, if you like his type, let me know. Oh, there's a lot more of them here than there are in Minneapolis. <laughs> this is where they come from. <laughs> oh. For some strange reason, I feel like calling somebody Buana. <laughs> Brenda. Hi, Hi Brenda. Mary. Oh, I've heard so much about you. Rhoda does nothing but talk about how terrific you are. Oh. <laughs> and Phyllis. <laughs> She's mentioned you too. <laughs> oh. Brenda, what are you doing? Oh, when you called from the airport and told me there were extra people, I started blowing this up. Oh. I only have one extra bed. Oh, well, thanks, Brenda, but I'm going to be staying with your mother. Oh. Uh, Phyllis? Me? Sleep here on a balloon? <laughs> <laughs> How very thoughtful of you. As it happens, I made plans to stay at a small but smart East Side Hotel. <laughs> Just getting courage up to go back outside. <laughs> it's a shame you went to all the trouble of blowing that up. Oh, that's okay. I can always use it for a dress form. <laughs> Getting your courage up. I had a shattering experience just now. <laughs> when I parked the car, I, I don't want to talk about it in front of the child. <laughs> me. She means me. The child can handle it. So what happened? I was assaulted. <laughs> assaulted, Phyllis. All that happened was that a man asked us for a quarter to buy some soup. <laughs> Mary, you silly goose, you don't believe that's all he was after, do you? Soup was just to give him strength for what he really wanted. <laughs> the city has changed. It's not my Gotham anymore. <laughs> Suddenly, it's a hostile environment. <laughs> place where I can walk into an apartment house and be accosted by some derelict lurking in the lobby. That's all right. He works here. 
Well, somebody's gonna have to walk me to my car. I refuse to be attacked before I even get out of the building. Yeah, there's a better selection of bums on the street. <laughs> okay, I'll walk you to your car, Phyllis. Thank you, child. Mary? <laughs> Rhoda, I'll see you tonight. This is all a fascinating experience. <laughs> and who knows? Someday, we may all look back on it and smile. <laughs> She's everything you said she was. Yes? Hello, uh, this is Carlton, your doorman. Yes, yes. What's his name? Uh, Joe is coming up. Mary, Joe's here. He's here. Oh, I know you're gonna love him. Oh, I'm sure I will. If you don't, I'll go nuts. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, oh, Mary. I mean, I won't call off the wedding if you don't, but uh, I really want you to. Rhoda, I have a feeling I'm gonna adore him, and I'm gonna be so jealous of you that I'll be miserable for the rest of my life. Boy, I sure hope so. <laughs> Rhoda, what the hell is wrong with that guy? Is he always drunk? Does he ever do anything else? Uh, uh, Joe, uh, this is Mary. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Oh, boy, what a day. It started off with the building inspector. The moron, he says, unsafe, unsafe. I said, of course it's unsafe. That's why we're tearing it down. That's the kind of halfwits that we got working in this city. It was a miserable, dirty job. That clown came in and he messed up everything. I got myself a parking ticket, and now that drunken doorman of yours, he tells me I gotta use the service entrance? You don't even have a service entrance. I tell you, the people in this city are getting dumber and dumber by the minute. I gotta go wash up. So what do you think? Up. Listen, Joe, I don't care what kind of a day you had at work. That is my very best friend in the world standing out there, and you just acted really cruddy. Well, what would you expect me to do, kiss her hand? No, oh, but I thought at least you'd be nice to her. Hey, considering how I feel, I was nice to her. I mean, what do you, what do you want me to do, forget that I'm ticked off and, and, and do a whole social number? <laughs> Mary? Yes? I didn't uh, get a chance to say welcome to our fair city. Oh, and I didn't get a chance to say how uh, truly wonderful it is to be here. You heard everything we said in the bathroom. Yeah, sure you? did. <laughs> now, you understand. You're bugged all day on the job. And look, I'm really sorry. I'll be OK in about an hour. Hey, Joe. You're OK right now. It's really nice to meet you, Mary. It's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> uh, listen, everybody, there's lots more food. Oh! No, 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 no. I'm stuffed. If I eat one more bite, I'll die. Uh, you're sweet to say that. <laughs> Listen, it was at this point that Martin was going to propose a toast, but as you can see, my Rhoda and Joe aren't here yet. Who's Joe? The groom. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll be here a little later. Uh, they didn't tell me the reason. They said it was important and I wouldn't understand. Uh, you don't know what they're doing, do you, Martin? No, sweetheart, I don't. Like I've been telling you all day and night, I don't know. Well, I don't know who's here and who isn't here. I'm having fun. I love Jewish food. <laughs> we never thought of steak as Jewish. Uh, Brenda, do you know what Rhoda and Joe are doing that's so important? I can't tell. Can't tell. What's well, okay, darling? You want some more cake? Yeah. Come on into the kitchen and we'll get it together. <laughs> Mrs. Morgenstern and I know where they are, and I really don't think Rhoda would mind if I told. See, tonight's their last night before they get married, and their last chance to have a date. So tonight they're having their last date. Oh. oh. Cute. <laughs> Cute as hell. <laughs> Hey, 
finished. Yeah. You didn't eat anything. Yeah, but this is the last night I have to watch my weight. <laughs> Joe? Yeah. Listen, um... No. Yeah, I want to ask you... Go ahead no, and ask me. No, never mind. No, Come no. on. It's hard. I... Why should it be hard for you to ask me anything? <sighs> Joe, you'll never understand me till you learn to be insecure. Okay. I'm going to ask you. Joe, do you have any misgivings about tomorrow? I mean, any second thoughts? Why am I being subtle? Is there something in you screaming, how do I get out of this? <laughs> no. Joe, you can tell me the truth. Really, please. It's only natural. Okay, sure, I've had a few thoughts. What? But it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> oh, come on, haven't you had a few minutes where you were worried whether you're doing the right thing? No. No, not one. But I spent a lot of time wondering if you're doing the right thing. Oh, Rhoda. Yes. Joe, there's a lot you don't know about me. A like lot what? of stuff. Okay, I'm going to tell you. First off, I'm not easy to live with. I'm overly sensitive. You look at me cross-eyed, I go to pieces. Oh, I love reassuring you. No, you won't know when it's happening. See, when I feel hurt, I do one of two things. I withdraw or attack. <laughs> <laughs> and the eating thing, the eating thing. Joe, sometimes I go two days straight talking of nothing but food. I'm boring. <laughs> I'm a boring person, Joe. Not to mention my temper or my mother or the fact that I have no experience whatsoever living with a man. I mean, Joe, there's your life, Joe Gerard, stretching out in front of you. You're gonna be living with a woman who is either crying or, or mad at somebody or talking about food. One terrific life. Oh, I really must love you. I feel so sorry for you. Look, Rhoda, everything you just told me about yourself, I know. And it, well, you wanna know a surprise? Sure, sure, I know. You're gonna say you love me for all those things. No, some of those things are really a pain. <laughs> and some of my things are a pain. But I have no choice here, because I'm in love. And I've been around long enough not to try to change someone. So I just want to ask you one thing. Sure, what? If you could fix that thing where you attack, because that really scares me. <laughs> I'll try, I swear. I, believe me, I'm gonna try. You're looking at somebody who's gonna get E for effort in this marriage. Uh, marriage. Yeah. This is my last night single. Mine too. I was more single than most people. <laughs> hey, you know what would be an appropriate thing to do tonight? I mean, before we go up to see your mother. Why? Just so we're ready to settle down. Let's sow our last wild oats. Oh! Ah. Here you go. Hello, is this the Morgan King residence? Uh, could you speak up a little, honey? <laughs> I am speaking up. <laughs> Well, then maybe we ought to stand closer together. Is Rhoda home? Who are you? Oh, I'm Georgette, and I have an invitation to the reception, and I know it's not until tomorrow, but I'm here already. I wondered, I wondered if I could help with anything. Oh, of course you can. Come on in. You can help us eat some food. Rhoda will be thrilled to see you when she gets home. You must be so relieved, Mrs. Morgan Stern. What do you mean? Rhoda told me that if she wasn't married before she was 35, you said you'd take all your clothes off in Macy's window. <laughs> Lower your voice, honey. <laughs> Everybody, Georgette, then vice versa. Oh, yes. Hello. Hello. Hi. Please don't get up. <laughs> but they always get up. <laughs> then I say that and they sit down. <laughs> Georgia, why didn't you fly in with us? I wanted to drive. You drove all the way? Yes, and I had to ask a lot of directions, so I learned a lot about the people along the way. 
You can tell so much about people by driving through their state. Oh, like what? Wisconsin people are very patient. I got lost there four times, but they were very helpful. One of them gave me a piece of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois people are nice, except for some men at a truck stop who kept asking me, what are you hauling, honey? <laughs> Ohio. I don't remember Ohio. <laughs> In Pennsylvania, though. Georgette. Said... Yes, Phyllis? You know I love you, dear. But trust me, that is not an interesting story. <laughs> Oh, 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 hello. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. How are you? Terrific. Oh, good. When'd you get in? I just got in. Oh, boy. And did you fly? No, I drove. It was such an interesting trip. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, how was the big date? You know, I love romance, Rhoda. Tell me what you did. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Girls, let's go in the other room. I can't take all this smoke. Yeah, it's too smoky. Let's get out of here. <laughs> oh, good. Just in time to clear the table. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You are getting married tomorrow. Yeah, Mary. I sure am. You know what I was just thinking about? Of course I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about all the old times, weren't you? They were good times. Wait, everything doesn't seem so great. How about some of those dumb dates? Oh. <laughs> Hi! Hey, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Ah, uh, choo! <laughs> Did you ever have a blind date make a funnier entrance? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> That's the word. Please. Like the last guy. Arnie. Arnie. Arnie the exterminator. Used to pick you up in that van with the picture of the bug lying on his back. <laughs> feet up in the air and wreath on his chest. It was disgusting. Oh, Mary, now just... Look, exterminating is, is an honorable profession. Okay, all right. It's not just the job. Rhoda, the man was always asking you to lend him money. Just until termite season. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Uh, <laughs> allow me to introduce myself. I'm another person in the room. Rhoda <laughs> Morgenstern. Oh, how would I know? How do you do? And this is my date, Mr. and Mrs. Armand. <laughs> you really think I'd make a derogatory remark about a person just because he's a shrimp? <laughs> you see what I mean? Uh, uh, drugstore's closed, so I guess I'll quit smoking again. Night. Got a cigarette? Uh, uh, Eric, I'd like you to meet my friend Rhoda Morgenstern. Rhoda, this is Eric Shrimp. <laughs> Phyllis, Ben and I aren't getting married. He's not my type. What do you mean, he's not your type? He is witty. He is attractive. He's successful. He's single. He's gay. <laughs> Finish talking about me? We were <laughs> talking about you. Oh, come on. Phyllis. Well, I just feel so excluded. I mean, I don't seem to have any real function here. You didn't pick me to be a bridesmaid. I'm not having bridesmaids. There's always an excuse, isn't there? <laughs> the point is, I'd really like to do something to help. Please. Well, you know, tomorrow everybody's going to be very busy, and I don't like the idea of a limousine, so, uh, since you've rented the car, you want to pick me up? Sure! Oh! And I don't mind the inconvenience. <laughs> I think it's the least I can do, considering all the great times we had together. What times were those? I wrote her, it's after 12 o'clock. It's our wedding day. Oh, how wonderful! <laughs> So nervous. 
Will you please relax? Come on, stop worrying. It's just a wedding. Oh, sure. And Sara Lee is just a cheesecake. <laughs> there. There you go. You look beautiful, Brenda. Just like a painting. Oh, yeah. I can even see the little numbers. <laughs> oh, Ro, I have something for you. Oh, what? Your first wedding gift. Oh. I found it in a secondhand bookstore. A discreet marriage manual for the demure young woman. <laughs> When was this published? 1900. Oh. I can tell it's old. They only list one erogenous zone. <laughs> and it's not even a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Ma. Oh. Hi, Mary. I thought it was... Oh, sure. Put my mother on. Probably too shaky to work the dial. Hello, Ma. Yeah, you want to talk to Rhoda? All right, Mrs. Rhoda. She's making nervous jokes. <laughs> Hello, Ma. God bless you, too. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd wear the white dress. You know, the long one with the... <laughs> now, Ma, please. I mean, how hard is it to get into a dress, huh? So what if I send Brenda up there to help you get into it? Well, listen, everybody's gonna be looking at you anyway. Well, I figure uh, somebody jumps up on a chair and hollers, whoopee, they're gonna attract some attention. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no problem. Because if I need any last minute stuff, Phyllis can help me out when she picks me up. Yeah. Now, Ma, please. Okay, okay. Brenda, I'm telling you that dress is gorgeous. Well, it's got a lot of miles on it. This is its fifth wedding. And if it hears your next one more time, it's gonna throw up. Great. Listen, I'm glad you're already dressed. You gotta go uptown to the Bronx and help Ma get ready. She's been ready for 30 years. True. But okay, Ro. All right, No answer, huh? Are you sure you're ringing the right room? Mrs. Lindstrom in 208. Oh, I guess she must be on her way then. No message, thank you. Carlton, the doorman. Yes, Carlton, this is Rhoda. Now, I'm waiting for a blonde woman, slightly overdressed, a little too much makeup, looking like she's in a hurry. Have you seen anybody like that? Seen them. I kicked three of them out of the lobby last night. <laughs> No, no, Carlton, this is a friend of mine. I'm waiting for her to take me to my wedding. Uh, Carlton, I'll be right back. Hello. Oh, hiya, Brenda. No, I'm completely ready here. It's just that Phyllis is very late. Yeah, uh, is anybody there yet? Uh, standing room only, huh? They weren't gonna miss this one, were they? Uh. No, no. Listen, I'll, uh, I'll call you the minute Phyllis gets here so you know when we're leaving. Yeah, so long. Carlton, you still there? Hello, this is Carlton, the doorman. <laughs> yes, Carlton. Now listen to me, please, carefully. Now this blonde friend of mine has a dark green car. She might be having trouble finding a parking space. How's the traffic? Uh, traffic? Yep, it's out there. <laughs> listen, I'm gonna come down there and look for her myself. Oh, good. It'll give me a chance to kiss the bride. Carlton, there's a buck in it for you if you keep your hands off the bride. <laughs> So 
Mary? Yes, excuse me. Mary, uh, do you think anybody has noticed that Rhoda isn't here yet? <laughs> uh, yes, I, I think they all know. I mean, the ceremony was supposed to start an hour ago. Uh-huh. No, they don't know. I've done too good a job of distracting them, and I have to keep it up. Uh, this is Rhoda's best friend, Mary Richards. Mary, this is Joe's mother. Ma, you already introduced them. Four times. It's good meeting you again, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Morganston, we are all a little aware that Rhoda and Phyllis are a tiny bit late, but I'm sure they'll be here any minute, and I really don't think you have anything to worry about. Mary, you've always been like a daughter to me. So shut up. <laughs> hi, hi! Oh, Phyllis! Oh, you don't know how glad we are to see you. My, what a reception. Carolina's dress is everything the lady at Bergdorf said it would be. Phyllis? Yes, Mary? Where's Rhoda? I don't know, I just got here. <laughs> Oh, my Lord, I was going to pick her up, wasn't I? <laughs> Phyllis, how could you? I'm sorry. She forgot to pick her up. <laughs> Ida, dear, you can't imagine how sorry I am, but it just completely slipped my mind. <laughs> I wouldn't do anything like this intentionally. Anyway, Rhoda's such a clever, resourceful girl. I, I just know somehow she'll get here and everything will be just fine and we'll all end up laughing about it later, don't you think? I'll kill you. an apology. <laughs> All right. I should have picked her up. It was my fault for forgetting. Well, you know me, Mary, old scatterbrained Phyllis. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, you understand. I had so much on my mind. You know how trying it can be to properly coordinate your accessories. <laughs> Murray, darling. You, of all people, understand how contrite I am. And if a person is really contrite... <laughs> Joe, I'm so sorry. Grandma, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Grandma. <laughs> we haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, but please forgive me. <laughs> oh, my heavens. Won't, won't somebody please forgive me? I forgive you. Thank you. You're welcome. 
welcome. Thank you. But if I were you, I'd get my tail out of here before <laughs> then. Where else? Oh, Rhoda, I'm so glad you're here. Mom was freaking. She was getting ready to have me stand in for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's here. Hold on just a minute. Phyllis, Rhoda wants to talk to you. <laughs> Real bad. Mary, why don't you talk to her? Uh, Phyllis won't come to the phone, Rhoda. Yeah, sure. What do you want me to tell her? Rhoda, I come from a small town in the Midwest. I can't say that. Uh, I'm from the Bronx. I can. Go. Uh huh. Sure. Rhoda. Never mind, Brenda. I'll tell Phyllis myself at the reception. Mary, you can't blame me. You know what she put me through? Well, you know, Phyllis, she was just... Don't defend her, I Mary. wouldn't do that. No, no. Do you believe I took the subway? The oh. subway, Mary. It was this one weirdo tried to write graffiti on me. <laughs> well, listen here. Pair of the dress is shot. No, it's not. I'll never be able to wear it again. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you look terrific. Oh, Considering. Oh. Even not considering. Um, you look great. How's Joe taking this? It's incredible. He's the calmest one up there. Oh, no. If he's calm, he's really bugged. <laughs> it's like the drums stopping just before the Indians attack. <laughs> Rhoda, are you... Well, I'm, I'm very optimistic about this whole thing. <laughs> Pop, Pop, I'm all right. She's going to be just fine. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. Listen, there are just a couple of last-minute details. The accordionist. He wants to know if you want, you want him to play Because, The Wedding March, or Lady of Spain. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm going upstairs. Oh, all of a sudden, I'm jelly. I would think of food, right? <laughs> Rhoda. I know, kid. I love you, too. Okay, just, um, buzz the thing when you're ready. I right, will. right. One if by elevator and two if by stairs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, honey, uh, your mother and I were talking last night. Yeah. You know, the kind of conversation you have at four in the morning okay. when your mother nudges me and says, uh, Martin, is my crying making it hard for you to sleep? <laughs> well, we, we were a little emotional, what with you getting married and everything. Well, we, we, we felt frustrated, honey. We, I don't know, we were so anxious to let you know what our feelings oh, were. Pop, you don't have to say a word. Well, so I... your mother decided it would solve everything if just before the ceremony, I said something terrific to you. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't know, I was hoping at the last minute something would hit me, but I, 
No, oh, it Pops, hasn't. Listen, I know how you feel. You don't have to say anything, really. And it's sweet of you to be worrying about no, it. No, no, honey. I, I have to come up with something. It's, it's a father's duty. Ah, fathers. See? Fathers, you come home late from work. Kids are all asleep. You never get a chance to see them enough. By the time they're old enough to stay up late so you can see them, they don't want to stay home. <laughs> and then comes the time when... when you can't stay up late enough to see them when they come home. <laughs> so, Rhoda, I... I just want to say... it's... it's good. Good to see you. <laughs> come on, come on, let's go. Ah, one lift by elevator. Okay. Rhoda, your bouquet. I left your bouquet in the icebox. You wait here, I'll get it. Me my makeup. <laughs> Family and guests. Rhoda and Joe have chosen to write their own wedding ceremony and marriage vows. What's wrong with the one God wrote? <laughs> We're here today to witness the marriage of Rhoda Morgenstern and Joseph Gerard, who didn't want to take up too much of your time. They just wanted me to say this. When two people love each other, it's natural that they want to share each other's lives. Because love is what matters most. It doesn't solve everything. It doesn't promise everything. It just matters. Now they like to say something to each other. Rhoda, let me tell you, uh, nobody in the world is happier than I am right now. Joe, uh, you know, don't you? Whatever it is I've got to give, you got. Do you promise to stay together, to grow together, and to trust each other, as long as you both shall love? I do. I do. By the authority vested in me by the state of New York, I now pronounce you married. 